Hello, and welcome back to another episode of The Thirsty Soul. My name is Tim Young, and I would like to thank you for joining me for this week's episode of The Thirsty Soul. We are on a five-part series uh, entitled The Battle of Wills. Today, we'll be doing part four. In part one, we talked about how uh, God has three different aspects to his will. The first aspect is God's sovereign will, then his permissive will, and then finally his directive will. In part two, we went into talking about God's sovereign will. In part three, we talked about God's uh, permissive will. Today, we're going to be talking about God's directive will. But before we do, let's go to God in prayer. Father, we are grateful as we come before your throne of grace, God, that we can open up your word and that we can have clear direction for our lives. We thank you, Father, that you uh, you give us a blueprint to follow. And we thank you for the example of your son. God, help us to live a life that, that pleases you uh, and that we can love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God's directive will. Have you ever known someone who called themselves a Christian, but when you look at the way they live, it doesn't quite match up to what we know from reading the Bible, uh, how the Bible calls us to live as Christians. They may call themselves a Christian, but yet they're smoking or sleeping around or gossiping or, or you know, just doing whatever their will is and whatever they want to do. Um, and more than likely, if you went up to someone like that who's just living any which way they want, they're going to say something like, don't judge me. You know, and more than likely, people like that are truly not seeking uh, to know what God's will is or to follow the plan he has for their lives. And really, they're probably not open to it. And if we're all honest, more than likely, we've been there at some point in our lives as well. I know I have. For me, another time in my life where I matured a little bit from that, and I called myself a Christian, and I thought I was a Christian, and I even got baptized, but I didn't quite know what it, it meant when I got baptized and how to be a Christian. Um, this is where God's directive will comes to play in our lives. A directive is an official or authoritative instruction. The Bible is our directive. It's our authoritative instruction. It's our blueprint, and it gives us tells us exactly what God wants us, the way God wants us to live. God gives, gives us clear direction and instructions if we choose to be his disciple. Let's read Matthew 28, verse 16 through 20. It reads, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority on heaven, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of age. Jesus had been with his disciples for three years at this time, and he was going up into heaven um, and he then turned to them and told them, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey. This is key to being a Christian. We have to be taught to obey. For me, there was a time in my life when I was, I was willing, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't know I, I needed someone to teach me. Later on in my life, I was taught by Christians who were living According to God's directive will, they taught me what God's directive will. Just like the scripture says, um, teaching them to obey. So we can't use God's permissive will as an excuse not to live in God's directive will. It's only God's permissive will when we don't know or we don't understand, but we're growing and maturing and learning to follow his directive will. We have to be willing to be taught by Christians to become a Christian. Knowing and choosing our will over God's will is not God's permissive will, it's just called sin. And God's directive will for us when we sin is to repent. We went over that in the last part as well. Repentance is a good thing. 
is turning away from sin and turning towards God. This is choosing God's directive will. God's directive will can also be called his general will for his believers. And his general will for his believers is for them not to sin. Let us read Romans 6, verses 1 through 4. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live it in it any longer? Or do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So if we are Christians, we should be living a new life to please God and to follow his directive will, the Bible. Let me tell you a story. When I was in college, I played basketball and I even lived with a lot of the teammates. Uh, There's five of us that lived in the house together. And before each game, we would pray. And one, one particular time, I was asked to pray. And when I prayed, I, uh, I prayed that we'd have no injuries, that we'd have a great game. And at the end of the prayer, I prayed that we will kick their butt. But I didn't say but, I actually cursed. And I remember after that prayer, you know, a lot of the guys came up to me uh, angry, you know, and one of them actually said, you know, uh, one of them said, how dare you talk like that to my God? You know, and I was thinking when he said that, you know, that when we're on the bus and we're always around, you know, just thinking about that, that particular person, he cussed all the time and he was talking about, you know, sex and, and this and that. And, and so what I learned from that situation is that people are always watching us. And if we call ourselves Christians, it's not going to make sense to other people uh, that they don't act like Christians. You know, for me, I didn't understand how you can curse all the time, but yet when you pray, you don't curse, you know. Um, so, you know, needless to say, I grew and understood more uh, of what the Bible says. I had to read the Bible. Um, but there was actually one teammate who was a Christian. He didn't go on our bus rides with us and what didn't participate and engage in all the talks and the cursing and everything that was going on. Um, and he actually sat me down and, and helped me by opening the Bible, helped me to read the Bible and see uh, what God's will is, God's directive will, um, and how to become a Christian. So let's take some time to reflect right now. Are you living in God's directive will? Do you read the Bible often to know what God's directive will is? Are you teaching others to obey everything that has been taught about God's directive will to you? Those are good things to think about. And we have to know that if we're going to want to please God, we have to strive to live accordingly in the way that he calls us to live, which is his directive will, which is clearly stated if we read throughout in the Bible. The Bible is our blueprint and it helps us to live the way God calls us to live. Thank you for joining me this week's episode of The Thirsty Soul. Next week, we'll be in our fifth part of the five-part series, uh, The Battle of Wills, and we'll be discussing how we align our will with God's will. God bless, and to God be the glory.